Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. It's April here in Savannah and springtime is fully underway and the garden is waking up from its winter sleep. And I'm going to have views of the garden at the end of the video if you want to see some of the different views of the Heavenly Backyard Garden. It's looking pretty good, but the big guns are not going to be going off until May and June and into July when the daylilies and the dahlias all start to bloom. And I got a lot of amaryllis beginning to bloom right now. But blooming up in the sky, that's where we have the galaxies. This is galaxy season now, it is, is, as it is springtime in Savannah and springtime elsewhere across the northern hemisphere. The Earth is looking away from the center of our galaxy and looking outward toward the outer edges and beyond. And beyond are numerous, hundreds, thousands, no, no, billions of galaxies are out there. And it's amazing what you can see in your own backyard. So. As I, as I record this video, we're also undergoing a, a solar eclipse right now. It won't be total here in Savannah, but I, I'm, I'm making an animation of that. And at the end of the video, I'll show you the animation of that solar eclipse here in Savannah with 75% of the sun being uh, uh, eclipsed and also some views from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. But more importantly right now though, I want to talk about galaxies, particularly Messier 104, the Sombrero Galaxy, which is only up uh, medium high in the southern sky. Now I'm at latitude 32 degrees north and it barely gets above that tree over there. The farther north you are, the more difficult it is to capture this galaxy. And I only have a few hours a night between these trees where I can get into uh, viewing of the galaxy. And the other one, uh, one of my uh, galaxies that uh, just, just basso, uh, boggles my mind <laughs> is the uh, Hamburger Galaxy. That's part of the trio in Leo or the triplet in Leo. Uh, the three galaxies, uh, main galaxies in the constellation Leo near the tail of the Leo the lion. Anyway, the uh, three galaxies are Messier 65, 66 and NGC or New General Catalog 3628. That's the Hamburger Galaxy. And with this telescope here, the Orion Eon 130 millimeter uh, telescope, it has a focal length of 910 millimeters. Now, with that, I get a, a nice wide field of view, and I can pick up the triplet in Leo, all three galaxies, with the view of this telescope right here. But a lot of the galaxies, when they appear through your telescope, they are very small. And so with that, you need a longer focal length telescope. And to do that, I use the Celestron 11 inch. Let's talk about that. So this is the Celestron 11 inch telescope. It has a focal length of 2,800 millimeters. That's a long focal length. That comes out to a focal ratio of F10. And with that F10, you get a much larger view of the small objects up in the sky. Hence the galaxies appear much bigger, but you only can see one or two at a time. Most of the time, only about one uh, with a telescope uh, focal length of this size. Meanwhile, the drawback to that is the longer the focal length, the more difficult it is to guide the scope. Now recently I added the Celestron Star Sense Auto Guider and I've been guiding easily with five minute subframes. Even I, at times I've had 10 minute subframes coming in very well. But I've been uh, using the basically the five minute subframes with this. Also the camera I used was the uh, Poseidon, the uh, Player One Poseidon monochrome camera. And it has a, uh, a medium size pixel size width on the sensor. Yeah, I believe it's 3.75, 3.76, somewhere around there. Where on the uh, uh, Orion telescope over there, I had the uh, ZWO071, which has a larger pixel size. So it makes the pictures a little bit smaller. Anyway, I think it's somewhere in 4.5, 4.8, 4.7. It's up there on the screen anyway. And as a matter of fact, I started to stack in Pixinsight. Now, it takes longer to stack in Pixinsight, but I think you come up with a better stacked image. And also, when you stack in Pixinsight, the images are already uh, uh, star aligned. So if you have like three monochrome uh, images, like the uh, red, green, and blue, uh, they've already uh, aligned. So you, you can skip a couple steps in your processing in Pixinsight by stacking in Pixinsight. Now, Deep Sky Stacker, I can stack these images, and it takes about three to five minutes uh, total to get all three uh, stacked. 
<laughs> in, in, in the fixing site, it takes about an hour in some cases to stack all these images. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the images and some of the uh, acquisition during the night. The first thing that I do is load CPWI and connect all the devices, including the focus motor, and then do a quick align of the telescope. I let Nina find the target by plate solving and also let it do the meridian flip, if there is one to be had, of course. In CPWI, in the StarSense Auto Guider menu, I select Guiding Enable, Guiding Always On, PHD2 Server On, but I turn off Precise Go To and Auto Meridian Flip as I let Nina do all that work. I can also monitor the Celestron Power Box uh, in CPWI. In Nina, I load the camera and turn the cooler on to minus 10. I select the electronic filter wheel, or EFW. For the focuser, I use the CPWI focuser, but it's important to preload that in CPWI before loading it into Nina. For the telescope, I select the CPWI and disregard the ASCOM option. For the guider, I select direct guider. From there, I connect all my devices in Nina. Next, I need to select my target from the Sky Atlas, then set it for the Framing Assistant. Then add the target to the sequence, and I like to use the Advanced Sequencer where I have a start, end, and main template already to be used. Once everything is set, I simply hit the Start button on the lower right-hand portion of the screen there. Then I have Nina do an autofocus, but the other night I couldn't get the scope to focus. Now on night number two, I was having all kinds of problems and troubles trying to focus the telescope. I just couldn't get a good focus. And I kept trying and trying and trying. And then it dawned on me that something must be wrong with the mechanics of the scope. And sure enough, I took a look and the focus motor had come loose. It was very, uh, the, the, there's two little lock nut screws that are holding the uh, the, the focuser on the scope itself, and they came loose. Uh, and over time, they, it does that. And a uh, matter of fact, I have an Allen wrench right here on the scope uh, next to it, so I can periodically tighten these up. And sure enough, it was so loose, uh, I was amazed I was even able to get any kind of close to focus. But anyway, I tightened them up, and sure enough, <laughs> the scope focused once again. So that problem was solved. After correcting the seating on the focuser, Sure enough, I was able to achieve a much better focus, as you can see right here. And here is the first image of the Hamburger Galaxy using a red filter. Certainly a much closer image than with the Orion Eon refractor with that shorter focal length. All right, let's take a look in PixInsight of some of the images. First of all, I want to look at the image from the Orion Eon. This is the uh, triplet in Leo. There you can see it picks up all three galaxies in the one of view. So yeah, that's a good thing for the shorter focal lengths, but if you want to get a close-up view of this galaxy here, for example, the uh, uh, Hamburger Galaxy, as you zoom in, you see you start losing a lot of definition. So with that being said, uh, let's close that and look at, first of all, the red and the green and the blue. There's the red. And notice I have it shifted to the right over here. This is from the um, uh, Celestron 11 inch with the 2800 millimeter focal length. And I was looking for a band of uh, a tidal trail that was left behind uh, the galaxy. And I was looking for it in this area here. That's why I have it shifted off to the right right there. But anyway, there's the red. Uh, here's the uh, green. And here's the uh, blue. I think I got that right. Uh, yes, there's the blue. And it came out pretty good. Uh, the uh, focus was pretty good, uh, considering it's a uh, F10 <laughs> at 2,800 millimeter focal length. And I was, I was quite impressed with the uh, focal length, uh, with the uh, focus on uh, this. And then the uh, combined product here and the color product here, um, before processing, then after processing, I came up with this image right here. That's not too bad at all. And if you zoom in on this, whoop, zoom in on this, you can see I got a lot more details than I had in the other image. So there's the hamburger galaxy. I guess it kind of looks like a hamburger, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's uh, move along to the sombrero galaxy. Sombrero? Sombrero. And uh, M. Messier 104. And there it is in the red. And this is with the Celestron now. Um, there it is in the 
green. There it is in the blue. And let's combine them together. And there is a combo of the uh, three. And here's one uh, doctored up inside of Photoshop. And again, zooming in on this, you can see quite a bit of more detail than you would with a uh, smaller uh, sh or shorter focal length uh, telescope. But there you can see the core of the galaxy. And then you got this bubble of um, globular clusters around the this galaxy. And the, both these galaxies are almost edge eyes. You can see this uh, uh, tremendous dust uh, uh, veil around the edge of the galaxy itself. Same thing with the um, uh, the Hamburger Galaxy, if I can find it here. Uh, it's, it's this one right here. There it is. There you can see the, um, the dust image across the center of the galaxy uh, itself. It seems like all these galaxies have this uh, uh, this function with the, the dust trail uh, in front of the galaxy around the edges uh, near the center. So, but when you're looking at them on edge on, you definitely see them. When you're looking at them face on, you don't see it as much, but definitely it's there and uh, interesting to see. But uh, with this Umbrella Galaxy, that's really neat uh, showing that uh, dust trail there. Okay. The Heavenly Backyard Garden is coming fully alive right now, waking up from its winter sleep. And I have lots of flowers already in bloom. And also, as I'm recording this video, uh, we're currently undergoing an eclipse of the sun. Now, it won't be a total eclipse here in Savannah, but about 75% of the sun is being eclipsed. But I can see it already getting a little bit dimmer outside. The sun is not so intense right now as we usually see here in Savannah. Anyway, uh, I'm looking at the heavens and what I want to do is look at the galaxies because this is the time of the year where the Earth is pointing away from the center of the galaxy, our, our Milky Way galaxy. It's looking out toward the other end of the uh, sky, away from the core of the galaxy. And with that, we can see a lot of other galaxies. Of course, you don't get to see a lot of the nebulosity that we see in the uh, uh, as you look into our galaxy. But if you're looking out of our galaxy, you get to see the other galaxies. And these galaxies are just you know, mind-boggling when you think about it with all those different a uh, number of stars. Each galaxy on the average contains about 200 billion stars and uh, some of the galaxies uh, contain over a trillion stars. That's each and there are trillions of galaxies out there so you make up your own opinion what's out there anyway. Thanks for watching and remember the heavens are filled with majestic wonders all in a sky near you and unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. <laughs>